One of the biggest misconceptions about setting up an Airbnb is that you have to be a professional designer to get it right. That unless you're trained and highly skilled in interior design, you'll have to hire someone else to plan and execute the setup of your short-term rental. Does having a good eye for design help? It does, absolutely. And are there some people that are probably best leaving this to a pro? Probably so. But when setting up a short-term rental, there's actually a pretty basic formula that you can follow to create a space that photographs well and is very comfortable for your guests. What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and we've been wanting to make some setup related content for you guys. So think of this as a part one, where we'll be sharing our process for methodically designing and setting up a bedroom at a short-term rental property. And we say methodically because we want this to be as approachable and as non-intimidating as possible for you. We've broken it down to a step-by-step -step process that you can follow at your own property. Today we'll be going over the first few steps of our process, which we're calling the Sims process. And then at the end, we'll be giving you some homework to complete before coming back for part two next week. So the very first thing to do when thinking about a bedroom is to space plan. What size bed are you going to use? Where are you going to place it? What width do you have left over on each side for nightstands? And are you going to include any other furniture in the space? For bed size, our general rule of thumb here is bigger is better but you also don't want to cram into the space. So if you can fit a king bed and still have room to walk around, place other furniture like nightstands, then you probably should do that. But don't cram. We really don't like to sleep more than two people per bedroom, unless you have this like monstrous house. But for the sake of this video, let's just assume you're working with a one, two or three bedroom house. For a one bedroom, ideally you have a king bed, unless the room is too small, then size it down to a queen. For a two bedroom or a three bedroom, start to think about your target guest group. So if you're going to be targeting families, you might want to consider adding two twins to one of those bedrooms. One of the things we always consider kind of at a high level is how to keep linens organized for our cleaning team. So the fewer bed size differences that they have to deal with, the easier their job is. So if you have a three bedroom house, try to avoid having, you know, like a king in one room and then a queen in another room. And then in the third room, having a full bed and a twin bed or something like that. So once you've decided on your bed size and the placement in the room, you're going to want to measure how much space you have left on either side for nightstands. And make sure to leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room between you know the wall and the nightstand and then the nightstand and the bed so it's not all just crammed in there. Yeah and one point we do recommend having a nightstand on either side of the bed. Then decide if you're going to add any extra furniture in the room. For a short-term rental we don't think having a dresser in the room is a necessity. That's a different story if you have a midterm 30 day plus rental but for short term it's a nice to have if you have the space but it's not a must have. If it's a very very large room and the space is feeling a little bit empty with just a bed and nightstands, then consider adding an extra piece of furniture. Sometimes we'll do a chair with a small accent table in a corner, or maybe we'll do a low dresser or an accent table underneath of a wall-mounted TV. One sort of budget saving tip is if you have the space in the room and don't really have the budget to spend on a few hundred dollar dresser, consider adding some nice luggage racks, maybe underneath that wall-mounted TV, gives people place to get their suitcase off. Keep in mind that you will probably get some scuff marks on the wall where you have those luggage stands. So make sure to keep a magic eraser in your supply closet so you can touch up that area. If we do this, we'll often shop for the kind of luggage stands that have a bit of a back on them and that helps, you know, keep the suitcase off your wall. Okay, so with space planning done, we move on to a design concept. But that word can be a little bit intimidating for people. So instead, let's call it the inspiration step. Also, I for inspiration fits better in our SIMS acronym. That too. We like to have the homes that we design have a very cohesive feel to them, meaning that we don't totally theme out one bedroom and then theme out a different bedroom. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not our style, and so it's not something that we're going to teach. But we do like to have each room sort of speak to a different person in our ideal guest group. For example, if we design a room with two twin beds, we might use more playful colors or art prints, knowing that kids are probably going to be staying in there. But we make sure to keep the space mature enough that an adult doesn't feel like they're getting like the short end of the stick staying in that room. A good starting point is to look at inspiration on Pinterest or even Airbnb. On Airbnb, you can like, look at the trending homes in your area. Look at them not to copy them, but maybe just to spark some kind of creative ideas in your mind, seeing what other people have done. And if you haven't used Pinterest before, or you think that it's just a place to go and find new recipes or outfit inspiration, we'd encourage you to take a closer look at the platform because it's actually a very powerful visual search engine. Yeah, so get on Pinterest, start gathering photos, 
photos, what inspires you, and then go back and look at kind of how it all fits together and what the common things are. Try and take note of why it is that you are gathering those photos. Is it a feeling that you're getting from those spaces? Are you drawn to a particular color palette? Is it texture? Is it that you really just liked a lamp in a picture or a certain rug? Take a mental note of this, but also physically write it down somewhere. The next step is we move on to Canva to create a mood board. Canva is a free and easy to use website that is basically a graphic design tool for people like me and probably like you who aren't actually graphic designers. I use it at least once a week for client proposals, YouTube stuff, and other projects, and it's my favorite place to create mood boards for designing rooms. Mood boards are a time-consuming thing to put the effort in up front, but they are a big time-saving step later on in the design process. Yeah, they allow you to visualize the overall look of a room to make sure that it looks cohesive and everything is working and playing together well, but they also allow you to visualize the look and feel of the furnishings at a whole house level to make sure you have that cohesive design. The next step in our process here is to create a companion spreadsheet. And we like to use Google Sheets. It's an online platform that anyone you share with can access, both of us, and we always make sure we're working on the latest version. This companion spreadsheet is something that we used to offer as a free download, but then we got in trouble from Amazon. <laughs> Basically, we didn't read the fine print of the Amazon affiliate program, which says that you need to have your links posted in a public place, like a web page, and not something that's downloadable and private like the spreadsheet that we used to have. Yeah, we had to email old Jeff Bezos to get that one taken care of. <laughs> we literally had to email Jeff at Amazon.com because we were going through the customer service process and we just kept getting these automatic responses back that we knew that someone wasn't even reading our, you know, our plea to be reinstated. So if you're watching Jeff, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Or whoever manages Jeff's email <laughs> account. Probably a bunch of people. Anyway, as a follow on to that, we are working on a version of our companion spreadsheet without affiliate links to share with all of you. So the spreadsheet that we created years ago and we've slowly been adding on to is broken down by every room in the house. So there's a section for living room, kitchen, each of the bedrooms, bathroom, outdoor, all the spots have their own little section. And then under each section, we have every item listed that we'll be purchasing for that specific room. So in a bedroom, we'll list out all the items in one column, things like the mattress, bed frame, any furniture, nightstands, linens, pillows, window coverings, and decor, the quantity needed, and then a Price. Then in the next column, we'll have a link to the exact item we intend to purchase. If you don't want to wait until we have that updated spreadsheet available, you can still access our sample inventory using the link in the description below. This will have most of the items that we would have on there anyways, and you can use that as a starting point for your own spreadsheet. So that is our SIMS process, which is the first four steps in any short-term rental setup. You've got space plan, inspiration research, mood board, and spreadsheet. And that brings us to your homework for this week. First is space planning. Make sure you're taking those measurements, figure out your bed sizes, your nightstand widths, and decide if you'll be putting any other furniture in the room. Then go make yourself a Pinterest account if you don't have one already and start looking through photos, get that inspiration going. Pin, pin, pin. For example, if you have a beach condo, start with that search term, beach condo bedroom and see what comes up. And then you can try different variations of it, like small beach bedroom or modern beach bedroom or boho beach bedroom and see what comes up. And you'll start to notice the ones that you're gravitating towards and then you can start to niche down your searches even more within that specific category. Homework item number three is go create a Canva account, open up a project, create a page for each room that you're thinking about and get ready to start mood boarding. And then the last assignment for the week is to work on your companion spreadsheet. You can start with the sample inventory in the description, like we said, and then work off of that. That'll have most of the items minus the furniture, but you know you're going to want a bed, nightstands, and possibly some other pieces in the room as space and budget permit. Let us know in the comments below if you found this info helpful, and if you'll be subscribing and signing up for notifications to make sure you don't miss the part two video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.